back on Route 222 for hopefully one last time. Hang on a sec, this guy doesn't want to fight? No, he doesn't even want to fight! Well, okay, I'll take that. Yeah, in the last video I added an annotation saying that, um, yeah, I forgot to fight this guy, but apparently he doesn't even want to fight, so... Okay, fine, it just, uh, allows us to continue our exploration of Sunny Shore a little faster. And just so you know, I put the, the video to private while I, was, while I was putting up the annotation so that nobody would tell me, you yeah, you forgot to fight the fishermen! Uh, but then, um, obviously the joke would have been on them had they done that because he doesn't even want to fight. Anyway, this building here is all about uh, tips for the underground. And, um, yeah, I, I, I'm sort of sad that I can't even show it, and yet, depending on, wh on where you go down, you go in different places. There are several regions in the underground that you can only access from several specific regions in Sinnoh. I'm not entirely sure on that, but I think there's an area in the underground that can only be accessed from one place in Sinnoh, and that, I think that is the... Full Moon Island, where you get Cresselia. Well, not that you get Cresselia, but where you release it, at least. But, yeah, it's sort of a shame that I couldn't get to show you the underground, because the digging minigame is actually lots of fun. Anyway, this place here, I believe, yeah, it's the seal market, where you can buy seals for your Pokeballs. You know, for example, that we've seen a few trainers that had some special effects. I'm gonna come back to, to that in a bit, because, uh, this woman here is going to give me a ribbon when I uh, max out my EVs on uh, a Pokemon, and Giratina obviously doesn't have max EVs. Here are some seals, by the way, not bothering since they're a waste of money. But, um, yeah, obviously I haven't had Giratina for a long time, so its EVs naturally aren't maxed. But yeah, seals, what they do is that uh, when you throw your Pokeball, they add a bunch of, speci of special effects. They can be sort of cool, but generally they're a waste of money. I prefer keeping my money for important things like items and stuff, and TMs and etc. You get the idea. And I wonder if... You know that sign there? I wonder if it was written, it's a black sign painted white, or if it's just a description. Because it would be weird if it was actually written on the sign. And oh! It's Jasmine! Uh, if you remember her, she's the Steel-type Gym Leader from Gold Silver Crystal slash Hard Gold Soul Silver. And yeah, if I don't have the Gym Badge, I'm gonna be forced to turn back, because at the end of the next route, there's a huge waterfall. And uh, I, not only do I not have the Waterfall HM, which is what Jasmine gives me once I defeat this Gym, but, well, I wouldn't have the right to use it anyway, since you have to beat the Gym in order to be able to use it. And then, um, yeah, Flint is still standing in front of the gym, hoping that um, his buddy Valkner is going to come back and try and give me some sort of fight. But we're not going to go there just quite yet. Now, what's this place? Oh yeah, him talking about Team Galactic reminds me, apparently uh, Cyrus was born and raised in Sunny Shore. I don't remember where I read this. I think it was on Bulbapedia. And, but, oh, right on cue, right on freaking cue, or maybe I just remembered it from previous playthroughs of this game, but yeah, Cyrus was born and raised in Sunny Shore. I wonder what happened to him. How about trapped in an alternate dimension for the rest of his life? And this house, I definitely do remember it because, um, she, uh, she hands out, um, ribbons for your Pokemon, depending on which day it is. For example, if I come here on Thursday, she's going to give my lead um, a ribbon that corresponds to uh, Thursday, and you can get up to seven ribbons on each of your Pokémon that way. And you may think this is useless, but that's because it is. Actually, no, that's not quite true. It's going to come in really handy for later in the game. There is something that can only be unlocked by having uh, ten ribbons on either one Pokemon or across your active party. I don't really remember which, but now that it matters, I'm gonna, I'm, all, I'm gonna put them all on the same Pokemon just to be on the safe side. Anyway, free Thunderstone here. But yeah, she said starting tomorrow, so I guess after I've beaten the gym, I'm gonna go back to that house and uh, humor her with a story, whatever that means. And she's gonna give me one of the seven daily ribbons. And yeah, 
Pokech. Oh, I think I remember what this guy wants. He's gonna give me apps for whenever I bring him a Pokemon of a specific nature. So, okay, what kind of nature does he want to see? Doesn't tell me the first time around. Serious nature! Okay, since he didn't react, I think I don't have any on me. But I, I'm gonna check just to be on the safe side. So, let's see. Brave, gentle, quirky, la 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 la. Nope. Not, no serious nature is in my active party, so I guess once I'm done exploring town, I'm gonna head back to uh, the Pokemon Center just to make sure that in my box I don't have anything with a serious nature. And uh, this is the lighthouse where um, where Valkner is at, so I think that's the last building we need to visit in this town. And uh, you, you're actually forced to come here naturally since Valkner is here. Since we need to get his ass over to the gym so we can battle him and elevator right away Well, I guess it's good that the lighthouse isn't as big as the one in Olivine while we're busy making references to that city And yeah, binoculars, blah blah blah, and Faulkner is looking into the binoculars for whatever reason I would have I would have expected him to uh, uh, To sit on his ass since he's allegedly so bored but anyway, okay, what has he decided here? If I, if I find you to be weak, you well, you're not going to be challenging the Pokemon League. Of that, I assure you. And yeah, I want to have battles that can thrill me again. How about a, a, a four-turn trouncing? Is that going to thrill you? Well, I'm not sure that's actually going to happen because my Giratina is still sort of weak for the time being. And... Okay, now before we go there, I'm just gonna take a look at the binoculars, and hey, it's the it's the Pokemon League building atop the waterfall. But uh, what they what they didn't show you was that the between the waterfall and the building, there's the you know this gigantic cave that precedes every Pokemon League Victory Road. Well, I guess they didn't show it because it would be sort of unsightly because um, having just having the building. I thought the waterfall looks a lot cooler than having the cave blocking the way, I guess. And besides, I think they wanted to show us that, yes, we are this close to the Pokemon League. Anyway, let's check in our PC whether there are any Pokemon that we have in there that are of the serious nature. Okay. Doesn't look like it, so I guess... I guess... <laughs> We won't be getting those Poke Chaps today, folks. Well, uh, we may get them later because we still have some Pokemon left to catch in this playthrough. But anyway, now that that's out of the way, let's head back to the gym. And, oh, Flint is still there? Oh, at, le at least I think he's going to move out of the way. But I thought that once Faulkner would have come back, that uh, Flint would have taken his lead. And by the way, just judging by his manners of speech, I think you can all guess what type of Pokemon this guy uses. Spoilers, it's ice! No, 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 I'm just kidding with you. It's gotta be fire. Though in Diamond and Pearl, he almost used anything but fire. But that's neither here nor there. This is Platinum, and he's got an all-fire team this time around. Anyway, yeah, I know I got seven badges, and this is the last one, so... Let's hear this guy out. Just see if he's got anything to s anything funny to say or something like that. This is the last time I get to give you advice. Listen carefully one last time. Gym leader, here's a master of electric type Pokemon. What? That's your expert advice? The gym leader uses electric Pokemon? Yeah, like, like I couldn't guess from the electricity everywhere and the gears and stuff. Anyway, the, the puzzle in this gym, well, you sort of saw how it works when you press the button, the gears spin around, and, the, and so do the platforms that are on them. It's not a very tough puzzle. It's certainly a lot easier than uh, the ones found in Maylene's gym and Candice's gym as well. So it's not going to be that big of a deal, though I guess it, it's going to get com more complicated than that, but not so complicated that, I, that I'm going to need to uh, cut some footage or go at super speed in order to um, actually pull it off. Oh, and by the way, something that I wanted to tell you, and I sort of forgot until I was reminded by the electricity, 
Uh, I managed to grind my Uxi all the way to level 57 thanks to the fisherman on Route 222. When I said it was a paradise for grinding anything with an electric attack, I was not kidding. And so we're done with the first room in this gym. There are three or four. I'm not sure which. I think I think three, but I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, you see those huge gears uh, at the side of the room? Well, you spin them around and they make bridges like this. So, um, yeah, on top of... Uh, on top of rotating those platforms that we've already seen, we got we also gotta rotate platforms that rotate not horizontally but also vertically. So it makes this gym a little trickier, but nothing I can't handle really. Really. Oh, and um, as a side note, remember uh, when I talked about the Drizzle Swift Swim combo ban, and I said how it would just to entice other people to think that. Uh, enforcing other bands of the sort would be a good idea? Well, doesn't it feel good to be right? Yeah, some people are actually so annoyed with, with Garchomp's ability to dodge attacks in a sandstorm that, the, that they're actually pushing for a combo ban on Sandvale and Sandstream. Yeah, that is just sad. Now, I'm not gonna argue against the fact that uh, if Garchomp dodges an attack at the right time, it can kill something that was supposed to beat it, then move on to sweep the rest of your team. But, I, and I'll be honest here, I don't think that's, that has anything to do with Sand Veil being broken. I think it has more to do with Garchomp being an excellent Pokémon already, and so, my personal opinion on this is that if that proves to be too much to handle, I don't think it is, but just in case it ever turns out to be, I'd say banning Garchomp would be a much better idea than uh, trying to nerf Sandvale artificially, and that way you that way you wouldn't also nerf other Sandvale users that aren't as good as Garchomp is. I mean, just to give you an idea, Gliscor last generation had Sandvale as its primary ability, and did anyone think it was too much to handle? No. Not at all. Because the fact is that, no matter how you slice it, Gliscor is just not as good as Garchomp is. But, you know, fortunately, I don't think uh, this rally for another combo ban is gonna go anywhere, because... Uh, because uh, last round, everyone agreed that there was something wrong with Rain. Whereas, this time around, not too many people are convinced that there is actually a problem with Sand Veil. So even if it does get nominated, I think uh, it's, it's just going to get shot down during the voting stage. But nonetheless, I think that, you know, you know, you all know about Smogon's reputation as a ban-happy community, whether it's accurate or, or not. As I explained several videos ago, I think it's not, because uh, the, 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 the better players that are actually good enough to have voting rights tend to not be as ban-happy. They tend to be a lot more objective than lower-ranked players who, tend, who want to ban anything that um, their team can't beat, even if it's not really broken. But, yeah, if it comes down to it, I think the higher-ups will be able to come to a decision that reflects uh, the current reality of the metagame. Which is, right now, I don't think Sandvale, uh, or rather Garchomp, is too hard to handle, even without Sandvale, though it is ir irritating when you miss an attack and Garchomp gets to go on a rampage because of that. But broken... I don't think so. And, uh, oh god. Still got two more Pikachus left to beat, and, um, time's running out fast here. I don't think I'm gonna be able to finish this battle before, uh, time runs out. Eh, it was bound to happen eventually. I just wonder how come it took this long to happen that, um, I would, uh, have to cut the end of a battle because I went over the time limit, but... You know, I expected it to happen eventually, and it, it, it looks like today is going to be that day. But it's not like it's that big a deal. We all know I'm going to kill that Pikachu anyway. So yeah, I'm going to continue this gym in the next video. And for now, it is implied that I'm going to obtain experience and the prize money.